Raise your hands if you have had a hand reading in your life. All right. And if you haven't, raise your hands. Good. That was a trick question. I was reading everyone's hands just now. So uh, we're going to be talking about hand analysis, and we're working with a different modality or paradigm. I'm not a palm reader, so there's no tarot cards, no intuition, and I'm not going to dismiss that because that's valid in a different system. But this is true 10 out of 10 times. So I'm from the International Institute of Hand Analysis, and there we look at an empirical study of half a million people's hands related to their life pattern. And my mission is to use that and biohack it to reverse your age and live a happier life. So people come to a hand analysis normally because they've seen somebody else have a hand analysis because you're never going to, in a lifetime, go, huh, I'm in the mood to have a hand analysis. So you come because you're, you see somebody in your life make a massive transformation. If you look at her, she looks pretty successful. Uh, her hand looks dry. I'll get out of the way. And I look at that and go, my God, that woman has some trauma. There is some uh, blueness around the lifeline. The hand is scaly. So she's successful and she's adapted to a life that's in her comfort zone. When we shift her uh, and we, we take that blood flow that is only in her fingertips, which is an emulation of your entire nervous system, which I'll explain. You just have to accept that right now. And what we do is we then open her. Now, she looks a little younger. She's doing the same amount of yoga. She's ingesting the same vitamins. So I'm going to say something provocative. No amount of mushrooms that you throw at your system matters until you understand the architecture of the blueprint of your neurology. There's an appetite that's very specific for you. She needed a lot of uh, oxytocin. So you guys know what oxytocin is. Raise your hand if you know what that is. Great, which is she needs a lot of kisses and hugs and love and stuff. So her hand changes when she gets that. Her body changes that. Her whole disposition, her youthfulness changes because she's now operating with a new experience that gives her the proper nutrition for the neurotransmitters and all the blood flows going all over the place. You look at this guy, he looks a little younger. Yeah? And this is five months later. That guy looks like he's, in the first photo, looks like he's been through a bad divorce and he turned to alcohol. Here, he looks different, attractive. And he ends up getting, finally, the girlfriend after seven years. So we would call that part, in the beginning, the shadow side. And the part in, that's reduced is the reduction of your shadow side. So you guys know what I'm talking about with the shadow side? What is the shadow side? Shadow side, you all have a shadow side. Your partner certainly knows your shadow side. And you may show it 80% to your partner, which means you're probably going to be breaking up soon or dealing with some type of separation. So this, people come to me because they've been working with a massive amount of dissatisfaction in their life. She doesn't look so happy. And her parents are also mirroring that dissatisfaction. This is a 21-year-old who has been bullied and mobbed in Switzerland, and she has had uh, resorted to a lot of marijuana and a lot of YouTube to pass her life away. The parents have given up. She's rebelled. She's been in a room for approximately two years. She stopped going to school, and I get a hold of her, and I put her in a bad mood. I read her entire neurolog neurological pattern, and all I do is piss her off. And then I break her through. And you're probably going, how do I do this magic voodoo? I show you how to hack your nervous system. You guys are all in your shadow. It's called Earth. And there's a percentage. It's called a parasympathetic and sympathetic system. And with the degree that you're triggered or having a low-level upset is the degree you're in your shadow. And some days are a little bit heavier. 
then others. So what does this have to do with hands? I've been showing you a lot of faces. So what we're looking at is a neurological blueprint that is uh, a deeply satisfying uh, work that I've been doing for the, since 2007. And it's equivalent to three years of psychotherapy. And I am not your, your therapist, all right? I uh, only show you a blueprint. And what we're seeing here is the same thing, and you can say the root of my work is not in palmistry. Because I know it's hard to believe. It has deep roots in that area, but this took a fresh look in the 80s from twins separated from birth who found out that they had a twin after 39 years. These are the Jim twins, incidentally both named Jim. And they look up the adoption papers and they realize, oh my God, I have a twin. And he lives in the state right next door. And he drives over and he finds out they both have the same Chevrolet. And they both had jobs in law enforcement. And they both married a woman named Linda. And they divorced that woman approximately at the same time and remarried a woman named Betty. And both their sons are named James Allen. And they both obviously smoke cigarettes and they make toys in their backyard. I don't know anybody who does that in, 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 in a consecutive way. And they both love star car racing and on and on and on. All right. That's a biological pattern. And while you don't have a biological twin, you have me who I can tell you what your biological pattern is. True story. So your reality is being processed through your entire nervous system through a thing called your sensory cortex. In other words, you're not in a Zoom session right now. You're feeling gravity. You're feeling the sensation of warmth, hopefully attraction. And you can see that you're processing all this information called reality through all of your senses. It's called the sensory cortex. So they were trying to figure out what is this thing called a personality or identity or the way that you filter the world. That's the sensory cortex. So, if you're going to understand consciousness and the architecture of your consciousness, where your neurotransmitters are going, then you look at the sensory cortex. Okay, so let's look at the sensory cortex. That's the sensory cortex. It's called the homunculus model. Who's seen this from biology, right? Yeah, it's an old model that's been going on since the 80s, and it is the map of sensory function. So it's showing the density of the highest or the highest density of sensory neurons within the body. So if you expand that out in this really odd model, your lips would be the size of a basketball, but your hands would be as big as beach umbrellas. They're massive. So that's why we're reading the hands, because we're seeing the entire architecture. So why the hands? Well, just think about how much I'm using my hands in this presentation. You use that for your expression and your needs. It is your mind. It's just an extension of your mind. It's one unit. So it's a nervous system. And if you remember, who can tell me what the uh, right hand part of, uh, maps to what part of the brain? Yes, the left brain. So what does that mean? That means that everything I'm reading in the sensory cortex on the right hand is going to the left brain, which means that I'm reading this public, almost Newtonian way of us processing the world. And obviously, the left hand would be the right brain, which is the quantum way in which we're seeing and sensing. And so there are different areas. We can say, we can look at it from the way that it's constructed biologically or evolutionarily as we are going and developing as a fetus. We start with the sensual side, and then we move to the heart line. And this is the most childish thing I'm going to say today, but everyone put your pinky together like this, like you're holding, and you can see that there's a line at the very top that makes a nice smile. All right? That is your emotional line. They call it the heart line in palmistry. And the bigger that smile, the bigger you smile. It is developed when you develop innervation in your face at 10 weeks as a fetus. And it is before you can bend your hands. All those three main lines are before you bend your hands. They are neurologically the, the circuitry of your whole system. True. And then... You come up, if that's love and that's your emotions, then you go up to the pinkies and you get love and connection. You have a ring finger, 
where you need admiration, and then you have this other middle finger about rules and regulations and not following rules. And then finally, you have what makes us tool makers and have rockets in space, the opposable thumb. So you have to think, for 400,000 years, our personality, from an anthropological perspective, has been developing in this way. So you have a dominant side. So if somebody has a big index finger, Trump, that's really thick, then they really act egoistic, which means that if you don't have a big index finger, you're very passive. Same thing with all of these fingers. Someone has a really tall pinky, they're Bill Gates in their code breakers. I have 26,000 hands on my computer, and that's what I love to do on a Friday night is organize humanity by hands. I'm that geeky. And I look at all the heart lines. I look at all the people with a tall index finger, which are all right and all judgmental and all optimistic and all visionaries, and I put all the big heart lines together, and I just see what I get. So... When you look at, and everyone raise your hands just for this little social experiment, and I want you guys to look around, and I want you to see what you're seeing through my eyes. What you're not seeing is hands. Stop thinking hands. You're seeing everyone's way of thinking. Sensory cortexes. Everyone's sensory cortex. You can put them down. That's embarrassing. So everybody has a, uh, a different sensory cortex, and what you'll see is that some people have a big, broad one, which means they're super practical. Some people are really slender and emotional, which means that they live a different life pattern. Some people have short fingers and crazy lines all over. If you have a cobweb of hands uh, on your lines, that means you're kind of neurotic. And some people are really neutral. So if you look at Dr. Peter Jenny, he has not taken his half-naked body on Instagram the way Kendall does every week. That's so out of his world. You guys all have a hand type that predicts the life, the right life for you. Snoop Dogg has never milked a cow, as far as I know. And she would be completely, Kendall would be completely stressed out if she had to run CERN laboratories. So if you just go back and forth and you look at every society that I'm going through and you're looking at everybody here and you see all the people that are air hands, they all love to teach and all the people that fire, they like to be gurus and all the people that are sensitive have these water hands. It doesn't matter if I'm in a Hindustani organization where they think I found some kind of karmic pattern that just repeats over lifetimes. So why is this? You guys came here for facts. Okay. So we've got a complete mirroring of the brain. It starts at seven weeks, and you just have a reptilian brain. You only have a palm. So when I'm looking at your palm, I'm reading your reptilian brain. I'm looking at all your instincts of sights. And some people have a really broad sense of appetite in that area. Then the most important part, in my opinion, just a judgment call, but the limbic brain develops, and you develop emotions, which means that you have two main components, though there are about 30 of them in there, but you have the pineal gland, which is my spiritual purpose, and I get my dopamine and serotonin. And I also have the amygdala that makes me get triggered. That rushes in epigenetically, which is the stress patterns that my, or reward patterns from my ancestors over the last 200 years, epigenetics. And it moves to the fingertips. And if I really like an area, then I get a big ball that says, for the love of God, I love creativity. I love admiration. If I have it in the pinky, I love speaking and communicating. If I have a little problem with power and I've been abused for 200 years or I've been uplifted and carted from Czechoslovakia into wagons, over World War II and had to adjust to German society out of, my, out of my choice, and it's not my family, I might have another stress pattern in the thumb. And I'm working out of Switzerland, so I see all these patterns all day long. So why? It's not, you would think, fear. Why? I want to cure fear. 
But you have to understand that from an epigenetic standpoint, fear is a necessity. They're trying, your ancestors were trying to protect you going, this isn't the time to be an artist in Nazi Germany. So just calm that down for a little bit. So that instead of having a big ball there, you end up getting a contraction. But let's just hang out with the ball. If you have a big ball there, then that means, oh, I love it. I get serotonin. And what are we talking about here? This is your immune system. It's coming out of the limbic system saying, I get rewarded here. And as a result, I get turned on. And you might have heard that some people find youthful rejuvenation when they do like art therapy. So when you look at those, there are certain experiences where another person doesn't have an artist in their body at all. But whatever I'm looking at, ultimately that ball becomes a fingerprint. If it's a small ball, or a bigger ball, or a loop, if it's just like putting skin over a big ball, you get a circle. And that's awesome. That means you need it. And that is your requirement every day. And if you don't do what I'm saying there, you're going to complain. And it's not just something for you to believe or you just to follow going, oh, I'm going to try this out. So it starts, I'll give you the complete map just for your edification, that if every finger represents a zone, and if the left hand is all about inner seeking, then I'm inner seeking ownership, which is about family, inner power, inner security, inner love. And if I go to the right hand, I'm outer ownership. So I want to be a world success. I want to build something up. Or I want outer acceptance, outer fame. Uh, Miles Davis had a circle on his ring, uh, left ring finger. He didn't like when people applauded. Elvis Presley lived with his guitar for applause. So that's a massive difference between the right worlds and the left worlds. Security out in the world versus inner values. Power out in the world and vision versus empowerment, Neil Strauss. So I was skeptical. I was just like you in this crowd going, this is okay, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, but mm. So I studied from the Institute of Hand Analysis that have organized half a million hands from a guy who has taught me, he has personally read 70,000 hands. And I went to prove it. And so I went to get a big butterfly collection. I wanted to see if wealth could be seen, if the theological advisor from the Pope could be seen from the hands. I wanted to double test them. I chose two people so it wasn't psychic. And they had to explain the system of exactly how they're able to guess everybody. And then I started to get famous with this, and I started reading people that you know, Russell Brand and a whole bunch of other people that is showcased in my book. So when they would look at this, they would go, they have nothing, they don't know where I've been to a hairdresser. They had no idea where I was. And I give them this handprint. That's all they had. And they would look at that and go, wow, this guy's really temperamental. He has a contraction in his index finger, which means he gets triggered in respect. He is very feisty and impatient, but he has a circle on his ring. He needs creativity. So they said, wow, who's an impatient guy? It's kind of like a rap artist or somebody who's, who's writing about the unfairness in a relationship. And they have, and he's got a funny side because this thing's round, and, you know, they go on and on and on. And they describe his life perfectly. And I go, guess what you're reading for? And I, Eminem. And they go, who's Eminem? This guy's 70 years old. He doesn't care. So I was like, this is great. And they were able to guess not only the, the film director, but the kind of films that they make, all from the fingerprints. So each area is a limiting pattern as well. What happens if you have a contraction? Then you're carrying shame, guilt, rejection, worry, anger. You get in bad moods the longer you're in it telling a story because your mind is constantly telling a story and it's mood driven. So where do you get these patterns from? Mom and dad. If you look at my kids, they have my, my wife, has a really weird fingerprint type pattern, composites and weirds and S's and everything, and my daughter has the exact same copy and paste. My other daughter has my fingerprints. So what I've found after working with people is that if you can heal your transgenerational trauma, i.e. your relationship with your mother and father, then that's worth everything. So she's doing the same exercise and yoga, but then she looks amazing. And then look at her afterwards, and she shifts her mom. 
So when you break through, your hand changes. And if you look down at your hand, you'll probably see how stressed out you are by these little horizontal lines that come and rush. That's the cortisol and adrenaline that's rushing out there. They're called challenge markers. Palmistry guys call those attack lines. And that is a, a real phenomenon. It's like, I got to do something and hold on like a Rottweiler. So the, no amount of information or talking about it or researching it is going to shift you. How do I shift you? If you get into an experience of what you're meant to do based on the fingerprints I'm telling you to go and live. And if you have a fear in that area, I'm asking you to go and confront that fear with goodwill. And then you get a beautiful human being who's here actually in the audience. Ursa, are you here? Raise your hand. I can't see him right now, but anyway. So here's how we do it. Four steps to shed the skin. One, you get a hand analysis. You drop by the booth, I can also do that for you. And from that, you're gonna have an intellectual understanding. That's it. So I'm not gonna shift you with that. You'll, have, you'll be in the mood to it, but that's it. And then we work with the optical center, the imagery that pisses you off. And you look at all of the things that from the code that I'm asking you to look. If shame is your thing, if anger is your thing, if guilt is your thing, you're gonna diagram it all into a shadow board, and then you're gonna be in the safety of your home where there's nothing being triggered right now, just an image. There's nothing wrong with looking at images. Then you see your whole life pass before your eyes, and then you come up with a vision. And at this point, I should be able to take you through an entire shadow board and then move you out of your shadow into a place where you're going, I got this, I'm not triggered. I feel these images and I can handle it. You take actual images and then you create a vision of your life. And I say, that's great. That's a wonderful screensaver. That's about as good as it is at this stage. I want proof. And so you replace all those images with actual photos and I give you three months to do it. And that's called the hero's journey. So, what happens when you get out of your shadow and live a hero's journey? Well, you do the life that I'm saying. She knew fundamentally, and when I read all your hands, I can say fundamentally, you're going to know from your heart that what I'm saying is true. You just haven't done it in your life. Your life, it doesn't seem to mirror your circumstances. So, what I do is I give you a little bit of sunshine, and I say, go do this. You're meant to be an artist. She's working in the back office of Swiss Airlines. She knows it, but she doesn't have the security. I go, for the love of God, try. And then three months later, she's in downtown Zurich, and she's representing a perfume model. And if I said uh, to that woman at the beginning, you're going to represent a perfume, she wouldn't believe me. And now she's on a world tour, Priya Ragu. So... What we're looking at is if you have very soft skin, you can change pretty fast. If you have pretty hard skin, I'm going to have to beat you with a bat in order to change. You have low neuroplasticity. So what you get out of that is massive changes. So what you're seeing is a life that is emulated, not just a life of your dreams, but emulated because you're now in the mood to do it. So 400 people's lives have been shifted since 2017 when I got on the ball and started offering this. So, uh, you guys can check me out here. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to answer questions in the remaining time. Hope this was interesting for you. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Well, I think now you have approximately 1,500 new clients. <laughs> so, but first, do we have any more questions? I have many, but from the audience. Mind blown. <laughs> Mind blown, no question. Yeah, there's one question here. Can we have a microphone? If, or if there's one in the back, then... Speak very loud. Okay. Very loud. Uh, I also did the palm reading. Like the quick one was really, really uh, mind blowing, and I encourage you everyone to go to it. But my um, my to go question is: What is a um, tip for anybody that we can um, do for ourselves when you're looking at our hands and to overcome like daily problems, like a smart tip for dating? Mm, for, for daily life, like a soft tip, oh, when we're looking at our own hands, right. what, <laughs> what, what could we do, for example? But dating is also nice. 
All right. So I'm looking at my hands all the time going, okay, it's one of those days. Um, the, the tip that I can I give you, the number one tip that helps people break through their shadow side is to accept that, what, that you have negative emotions and you make them okay. So the, the, the degree that you're in a judgmental pattern or you're judging yourself and you're making something wrong is the degree that you're going to be in your shadow. There is a direct correlation, all right? So if you know uh, positive intelligence, raise your hands. If you've heard of Shirzad Shamin's work, right? This is that, okay? So when you go into a triggered response, you go to a place of safety and you go into a, you act like, a, you act controlling, you act based on the hand type from those four hand types. Kendall Jenner acts over emotional. So, uh, Snoop Dogg acts uh, independent, on and on and on. I can look at how you act in that. Knowing that is one thing, but also what is the trigger that you see in the fingerprints? Once you understand that, then I, I, I coach you in this, to look at that with goodwill. So if you have a shame pattern or an anger pattern, be okay with it and just accept it because to the degree that you don't, feel okay is the degree that you put it in the shadow saying, I don't have time for this today. And now what you're doing neurologically is saying, this arm over here doesn't matter. I don't have time for my arm. All right? So there's a neurological fossa tissue where all of your trauma is going or your anger and it gets stored in your muscles and you're saying, I'm not going to deal with it. And then when you, when you fundamentally become okay and you feel it, then you open up and become a human being. It takes 90 seconds to do that. It's called the RAIN method. And it will open you up, and then you're finally back into a good mood. Yeah? Goodwill is the key. All right. Anything else? Yeah. There's one more question. Uh, I was, uh, first, thank you. Uh, this is awesome. I was wondering, what are you sort of obsessed with right now in this journey? or something that like you're geeking out on in terms of how to, <laughs> how to what get am I people, geeking out on how to get people to where they are even sooner perhaps because yeah. I feel like this is this is really cool the biggest change right now is when AI gets a hold of this and is able to we have major data protection laws that prevent AI from getting hold of your personal data and I respect those laws so I'm not going to be sharing any of this data. But at the same time, when it becomes a cultural movement to do so, when people and doctors recognize what I see and AI gets a hold of it, they already are doing it for your medical uh, records. They're looking at blood pressure and everything, and they're, they're using AI to, uh, to see what are the trends in medicine. But nobody's getting and correlating handprint formations that cause these trends. When that gets there, you're going to have something like Gattaca, where you'll be able to scan your hand and see the entire life pattern and a deep, deep, rich wisdom. And then correlate that to Facebook and Instagram and all the other things that you like, and you're going to start to see that there's a fascinating uh, development in your life pattern that is evolving. So we're here to evolve. You're not stuck in your pattern, by the way. And that's why I'm helping you move out of your pattern to move in, out of a fixed mindset into a growth mindset where you love your life and you're living it powerfully.